Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in and today we're going to talk about gentrification in cities and just in case you don't know that process, gentrification is when you have a lot of money coming in, investment in new properties and the rent rises, the price of houses rise and as a result people move out and we're going to talk today, me and Roshan, good friend of mine, he's also quite passionate about cities, we're going to talk today and debate what the effects of gentrification are and what we can do about them. What do you think about gentrification? Like, what Have you experienced it? Have you seen it? Well, I think when I think about gentrification, the most, I, I mean, I just looked at familiar ground. I don't live far from Stratford, for mm -hmm. example, in East London. I went to school there about 10 years ago. And I can assure you, I mean, over the past decade, at, at least since the Olympics sort of timing that happened in 2012, it's changed massively and as a result of it, you know, there's been a lot of animosity at least within the local people and people who actually live in the New York borough mm. um, that their sort of localities and communities are being destroyed as a result of all these sort of suburban high-rise skyscrapers and residential yeah. that are just being built up. And there's places not just in Stratford, because Stratford's a specific example, a very special example because of the Olympics. Yeah, I mean Brixton as well for example, yeah. I mean I was there about two months ago again with a friend um, I mean, it's known as a hub of sort of Afro-Caribbean activity, mm. a lot of shops, salons, uh, supermarkets that sell a lot of West Indian produce. Mm. Um, and it's just changed now where, you know, there's, they've been driven out of those localities and as a result, you get a lot of sort of high street retail chains, those are Gaucho, right. the Prezos, the Nando's coming in. Yeah. But I do believe everything has its time and, right. you know, retail has suffered the past year anyway. Mm. A lot of restaurant chains closing down. So the the future is uncertain right now, I'd say. Right. But there's also an interesting perspective that these, because this is happening not just in London, this is happening in places like Manchester, it's happening in Berlin. There's a big debate going on about gentrification in Berlin and like people that have lived there their whole lives. Um, but uh, I've read and I've uh, talked to people that have argued that it's the same people that in their youth needed low rents and moved into mm. places with low rents that as they uh, mature and they become young professionals and professionals with higher pay uh, have families and so on then they become the same people that complain that oh rents are too oh, it's not the rents are too low that the places are too shabby or mm. we don't want to live here let's make them better which in turn is what causes gentrification um, turning them into more appealing to middle uh, class tastes mm. is, do, do you think that's the case as well to a certain extent, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, especially with a lot, like a lot of firms, for example, and when they work very closely with housing, um, so well, let's say the borough, and the councils and stuff. W I just believe that you know firms need to really reassess their CSR policies. Mm. That of course I can understand if they're building these entertainment complexes and these um, eateries outside for you know. The luxury and entertainment of the people you know that are around at the same time you know london is catering not just to a middle class population but we have to understand it's leading it's catering to a worldwide population right. a lot of investors coming here to actually set up their own businesses or actually just use this as a stay for a while mm. they're in london right this ultimately does impact the people who actually live within the areas because mm. i mean we've seen it with grenfell already you know if the fact that a lot of investment was not put into a social housing where people actually live in these complexes right. um, if funding is cut whereas you know you're building all these skyscrapers and not many people actually live in there but it's more as a sort of like you know a homestay for the mega rich something is wrong there you know so what kind of solutions can you think of to make gentrification less of an issue for everyone well I think that Chris apart from the awareness piece that I touched on before I think the one thing is just really making sure that um, developers engage those external key stakeholders that form part of the decision making process so um, you know people from the bars and people from the councils who best represent the interests of the community bringing those people in just to make sure that you know there is no late advances in the in the process that could really hinder the interests of the community mm -hmm. and I think the second um, and this could be quite a radical policy is really creating a lot of affordable social housing within asset rich neighborhoods just so that those neighborhoods are a lot more um, diverse in a way and this just makes sure there's no exclusionist policy in place and so yes that's why I think about firm CSR policies but really keen to understand what you think yeah so my thing with uh, gentrification is I've experienced some of it in Nottingham Nottingham's really risen up as a place in the past couple of years they've built tram lines which in turn, transportation does make places more expensive, but they make it also more 
um, accessible. So obviously a lot of young professionals have moved into Nottingham. Um, there's other places. Like yourself. Yeah, yeah, like myself, and places like Manchester and Leeds have uh, experienced uh, partly urban regeneration. So that's mm -hmm. affected those as well. And I'm really fascinated by um, urban regeneration and gentrification as a process because. On one hand, you have the incentive for the company to expand, to get more people employed in the city, whether it's Manchester or whether it's London or wherever. But this is affecting other places, global cities like Berlin and stuff. Um, but also the incentives for the people living there because they don't want to get kicked out they, or they want to move into more accessible areas where you, they don't have to commute two hours to get to work. So I think urban regeneration and gentrification are interesting processes and they're quite complex in terms of who they affect, but we need to look at some of the solutions. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. Do also check out Roshan's blog. He has a blog about urbanism and cities, because like I mentioned, he's really passionate about this stuff. The link will be down below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up below, comment with your own opinion or personal experience about gentrification. And if you love this kind of content, please do smash that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. See you next time. Ciao.